So using uh, Python at Nurse. And so before we get started, how about we get a quick show of hands of the participants? Um, how many people would say that Python is their primary um, language that they use for, um, for your applications? Okay, a good bit. So what about for those that did not raise their hand um, in the chat, if you could maybe enter what you consider um, to be your primary programming language that you use. Ellen said we had 16 hands raised for Python. I see a lot of Fortran and C++. We had a few people with R as well. How to put into action. So this is actually, we are going to show how we can utilize. Oh, we have someone, if you could be on mute, please. Okay, okay, so a good variety then. All right, very good. Um, I, I always like to ask that because I never like to assume anyone is making use of, you know, a language that is popular or whatnot. I'm, you know, more into uh, my background and de dealing with scientific applications and simulations is more based in Fortran as well or uh, C, C++ too. So I use Python mainly for a little bit of a more data analysis, uh, but a lot of the workflows that we have been um, working with and the usage of Python um, for data processing and visualization has increased exponentially uh, for us at NURSE. And so it is uh, one of our fastest growing kind of language that we have to use. So at NURSE, we provide a uh, optimal uh, way for you to use Python for scientific computing. And so to get started, what you would do is simply load the Python module uh, in your terminal environment. You could just do your module load Python and you can specify the version available. Um, once you have the module loaded, you just simply enter your Python command. It will let you know the version that has that is currently loaded. Um, current version that we have loaded is 3.11.7, um, released on December 23rd, 2023. <clears throat> and so you can, once that is loaded, you are good to go with uh, making use of Python and doing, um, doing whatever uh, calculations or operations you need to do within the module. Um, we have a lot of... Uh, documentation that is available on on using Python as well. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit of best practices throughout the day um, as well. So there is plenty of tool, uh, plenty of information available for all of our users to uh, make understand how to make use of Python if you are not too familiar with it. Now, depending on the type of uh, application you're using, you might want to use different uh, versions and you might want to have a kind of a different environment set up for some whatever the different uh, scientific applications or simulations that you might, might have to do. Um, in order for us to provide an efficient mechanism for doing that, uh, we do provide a Conda environment um, and Conda is a, a very simple and easy uh, package management environment that we you can use for Python to manage uh, different packages for um, for scientific computing. And so it allows for you to to keep um, any uh, libraries that maybe might um, that might uh, intertwine or you know. Uh, 
not work together separate for your environment. And so once you have it loaded your Python environment, you can do a conda list and it will list all of the packages that you have loaded within your environment. And we'll go into a little bit more detail about how to create that on uh, this talk as well. And so Conda provides us with a great way for just managing multiple uh, Python packages or depending on the type of application that you need to be doing. And so you can create your own custom Conda environment um, with these commands. So you'll start by simply doing a module load Conda. And then what you can do is you can create your environment and that environment is simply done with the conda create command. Um, you do the dash n option. You will name what that environment is for you. So it could be, you know, my env or it could be my uh, physics env1. Um, you can specify the version of Python that you want. Um, and then whatever other uh, scientific packages that you want to use as well. Uh, once you've done that, you can do the conda activate your newly created environment, and you can go to Python um, or pull up whatever other um, other tools you need to use as well. So that's another way for you to create your own custom uh, conda environment um, with whatever uh, appropriate libraries and tools that you need to use. And so you can also use um, Python within a container as well. So you can use Shifter, create your, your Docker image with your Python environment. And that is also another way for you to make use of Python. Now, there's also, um, there's also, you'll see, um, we have a system Python that is available. Um, this is likely not the Python that you are looking for, as it will not have um, a lot of some of the um, advanced uh, libraries that you'll need to use. But just so you know, if you do not do your, your the module load Python, you might find the system Python available, um, but that might not be the one that you're looking for because it's not configured optimally for you to get the best out of the out of using python and so getting a little bit into more detail about uh, the conda module and so conda of course is a, it's an environment and package management tool um, it's very popular within the scientific community for um, using python and so what, again, as I mentioned earlier, Conda environments are really good with um, allowing for you to create various environments that allow for you to have um, isolate, isolated and reproducible um, uh, software environment packages. So Conda acts as that package manager and it's great for installing and resolving the dependencies for your projects. And so once you are, once you've loaded Conda, you know, and it's been, you don't have to do um, the module initialize as you normally would have to do or module init. Um, so we've kind of have a, a more optimized uh, Conda environment for you to make use of. And so when it comes to um, package installation at NURSE, um, we, most packages should be able to be installed via Conda, um, and you should all, you could also use pip. So what you want to uh, make sure that when you are installing them, um, you can specify if you have different channels that need to be used as well. Um, it's fine in most cases if you want to mix some of the different packages and different channels, um, but sometimes that can lead to uh, version conflicts um, as well. So you want to make sure that you check what packages you do have installed within your Conda environment by doing Conda list. Um, so it's recommended definitely that you, um, that, that the Python packages most are going to be installed with the compiler wrappers. 
Um, so for example, M MPI for Python, um, and H5 for Py are potentially going to be in that manner as well. We'll have some examples on the next slide. Uh, we also have the CUDA Toolkit, CUDA, CUDA Toolkit that is available um, as a module or package installation. Uh, some of the GPU-enabled uh, packages for Python, um, they're installed from Conda Forge, and they will install with your in the, with will install the CUDA, CUDA toolkit in your in your Conda environment. So this may conflict a little bit um, if you already have the the CUDA toolkit module that's loaded by default. Um, so those are some things that you want to consider and make sure you understand when you're you're building um, your your own personalized uh, Conda environments. Okay, are we doing good on the questions? So I'm just typing uh, with a Python question now. <clears throat> okay, now so using, what was that? Please go on with your talk at the moment. Okay. okay. All right, so uh, MPI. So MPI for for Pi Pi provides a uh, interface uh, for you to use uh, MPI within your Python Python applications. Um, it's already available via the module load Python, uh, and there this provides uh, CUDA support in Cray and Pitch. Um, so if you want to install um, MPI for Pi with the CUDA support. Um, there's a, a very few, just very simple steps that you need to do to enable that support. Because um, by default, it won't be available if you're looking to do uh, uh, a lot of GPU cal calculations. Um, so you simply just have to do your module load, um, the programming environment, that's GNU and CUDA toolkit. And then you'll have your compiler flags to the note, um, the, the type that you need, as well as Conda as well. Then you'll do your Conda create and specifying those flags that you need, uh, name your environment. Uh, you can specify the version of Python that you want to use. And then all you'll need to do is launch your Conda environment using the Conda activate command, um, as well as your environment name. And so with, once you have this uh, launched, you can do uh, pip installs as well to, uh, to do a force installation um, as well. So again, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, any CUDA, that any CUDA aware uh, MPI or Pi has to have that CUDA toolkit loaded. Um, so, and that's even if your code does not use uh, GPUs. And that's just to make the the optimal use of um, MPI being utilized within your application. Okay, and so I pip will pip will work um, again on Perlmutter as well for managing packages. Um, but we do definitely recommend that you are very cautious and care and careful when using it for packages being installed um, because pack packages even installed with the user flag, they're, they're not necessarily gonna be confined to your environment. And so if you do uh, the pip install um, with, your, with your username and the, the specific package, um, it's gonna, it might be set to your home directory, which is not ideal for um, installing a lot of the PIP, um, those large packages like that. That's not what the, your home directory is meant for. Um, so some of the, the best practices is that we do recommend that you um, only install within the Conda environment and not outside. So you want to, you know, do that PIP install within in your package within. So 
that way you are keeping um, your home directory safe and just installing what is in, what is needed within in that conda package conda environment and so you also want to take into consideration a few other things um, when we consider um, running Python at scale across a number of different loads and the um, complexity that can occur. Um, it has a lot to do with some of the hierarchical components and some of the overlays that can that go from the, the wrappers used to create um, the MPI and open MP threads. And so if you have too many um, module imports or whatnot, that can put a significant load on our shared uh, file system. So to avoid this, um, what we do recommend is using a container uh, such as Shifter or Podman, um, use your, your, your global storage. Um, the specific options that you can use is going to be with the dash P um, flag. So you'll do your conda create specify your directory for installing, as well as provide the version of Python, and then you'll activate your conda environment. And what you want to do is avoid using um, home as well as the CFS for um, the for your container, um, for your conda environment at scale. Okay, so some other things that we also have to consider when you're using um, Python in parallel in X scale is that um, you can have too much uh, parallelism um, where you have uh, a oversubscription of different threads that are um, that are cross battling for for um, for time. So NumPy uses OpenMP threading under the hood. And so this can cause problems because if you have multiple processes, um, you could basically uh, exceed the number of, of available CPU cores per node. So you want to ensure that you are optimizing to make sure that your number of OMP threads and the processes per node do not um, exceed. So with the default uh, worker pool size, it's common for a lot of the Python applications to simply use that um, the OS uh, CPU count as representing the number of processes or workers that can be used, but that doesn't take into account uh, CPU binding as well. So it's important that if you have uh, a lot of parallel application that are nested and they're gonna be making use of, um, of a number of different threads that you specify those numbers, the number of workers that you're gonna use because if you rely on the default, it's, it likely could, could be uh, inaccurate for your application and your simulation. So those are just some considerations that you want to make sure that you keep in mind when you're using uh, uh, Python at scale. All right. And so uh, in summary, when we're using Python at Nurse, you want to make sure that you're using a appropriate Conda environment. Um, and that's, that can be customized for your specific type of science that you're going to be using with Python. Uh, you want to make sure that you use um, the file system or your glo global common file system or containers um, when running in parallel. Make sure that you use all your compiler wrappers to build those packages, um, such as MPI 4Py. Uh, you avoid running uh, Conda init um, within, your, within your startup uh, shell. Um, and also be very cautious and careful using uh, PIP. Um, so avoid using the system Python as well. And uh, be very diligent and careful uh, when you're doing uh, parallel Python uh, to ensure that you don't uh, have too many uh, threads or you oversubscribe the resources available to you.
Okay, so we will, and so using Python on GPUs, we will we'll get through this very quickly. Um, so getting started with GPUs in Python, um, so you have to consider that uh, NumPy and SciPy do not uh, necessarily use GPUs right out of the box. So there are uh, different uh, Python-enabled GPU frameworks that can be used as kind of uh, drop-in replacements for a lot of the um, scientific libraries, NumPy, um, SciPy, Pandas, and whatnot. Um, and those include um, CudaPy, as well as Rapids. And these provide uh, uh, machine learning libraries that offer that support for uh, GPU-enabled scientific computing. And essentially, they provide uh, those wrappers so you can still make use of the, the same commands that you would um, for NumPy and SciPy. Um, you also have the usual libraries that are <clears throat> support GPU computing, uh, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, as well as uh, JAX. Um, if you want to write your own uh, GPU kernels um, or, you know, if their own uh, CUDA, NVIDIA with their own GPU kernels, um, NumPy and CUDA, Python are available as well. Um, and then you can also do uh, parallel Python at scale across multiple nodes. Um, for using and making use of distributed memory as well. Um, so with uh, MPI, 4Py, uh, X, as well as uh, Dask and CUDA Numeric as well for making use of distributed memory environments for, for executing your Python applications at scales. Um, and it's important to keep in mind, many of these GPU libraries have adopted uh, CUDA array interface, and so that makes it uh, very simple and easy to pass array-like objects in GPU memory to help with uh, efficiency. And so there's also uh, uh, efforts for uh, a Python array API, um, but that's still more kind of less in beta and trialing uh, stage right now. Okay, and so that is getting started a little bit with uh, GPUs. Um, understanding the CUDA toolkit dependencies and via the module. So you'll note when we load Conda, um, we have our CUDA toolkit that is installed. And so the current version installed is going to be 11.7. Uh, 11, 11 so if we want to uh, check um, and have our specific uh, package dependent type of uh, CUDA environment. We can do, what we can do is simply um, create our envi environment. Um, we can activate um, the environment. We'll do our we can do our pip install for our specific uh, for our specific uh, CUDA Pi implementation that we want. And then in that way, we're able to launch the version that does have support for um, Python array APIs and whatnot. So different ways that we can um, load and uh, create our own environments. And all of this documentation can be, uh, again, found on our nurse documentation uh, for using Python for Perlmuter. So if we want to unload, um, we can unload our, our CUDA toolkit module unload, and then we can, then we will have our, then we can have our Conda install the copy of our CUDA Python that we want to use. So one question to consider is, um, is my code a good fit for a GPU? Um, who has had any problems where they've had an application that they thought would run great on a GPU, but it actually just, it, it did not? Does anyone in the chat want to share that or 
if anyone wants to come online really quickly as well. Nobody? So I can speak a little bit. I've, I run into this. Um, okay, go ahead, Kelly. Sure. So uh, porting um, Monte Carlo methods for um, particle transport seems like it might be a good fit, um, but really you actually have to turn the traditional algorithm kind of on its side to make it work well in a GPU context. Um, so it's, it's really often the case, I won't get uh, into the details here, but um, a lot of algorithms that were originally developed for CPUs um, really, really need up upending in order to work efficiently on GPUs because the architectures are so different. So I, I too am a victim of this. Yeah, I think it's, it's kind of the problem that, you know, we think we have a new, a new technology and whatnot, and we automatically think that what we have, we'll work on it and don't realize it takes a little bit more work and problem solving to, to make use of that new hardware that we have. And so with GPUs, and thank you so much for sharing, Kelly, and Kelly is up next, actually. Um, what with GPUs, it's optimally going to be a good fit if you are going to be performing a lot of calculations using large arrays. And that's because you can make use of the in-memory available on GPUs for storage. And so, you know, the, a data set can fit in the GPU memory, you know, on Perlmutter 40 gigabytes for our A100 GPUs. So this also minimizing minimizes if the memory is being stored on the GPU, um, IO is negligible. And so it does not become, or not negligible, it does not become a bottleneck. And so it's a lot of considerations that you can have to consider for whether your application will actually be a good fit for executing on a GPU. And then also figuring out what might be the optimal environment um, or optimal uh, libraries to use for accelerating it on the GPU as well. So different considerations to take into mind um, in determining if your applications that are not GPU enabled would be ideal for GPUs. Okay. And so that is, we are reaching the end of um, our uh, best practices and using Python at NURSE. So again, you want to make sure that you utilize Conda for maintaining your, your software environments. Uh, only use PIP uh, within a, try to minimize your PIP installations to being within a container, container um, as well. Um, we have a number of different um, resources and docs that are available to help you uh, utilize Python, understand how to use Python on Nurse, as well as optimize um, your application code. So please make sure to make use of the available documentation. And also uh, submit a ticket if you're having problems. Uh, the very last thing we want to do is for you to not uh, be efficient in making use of our resources. So again, uh, we would like to welcome you to NURSE. Um, again, we're here to help you use Python productively on Perlmutter. So ask questions, uh, read our documentations, and submit a ticket if you, if you get confused. And also make sure you read the, the weekly email that we send out.